This is Anjam TV reporting on. This, this is, is Anajam TV. TV. Uh, tell us what you do and what you have done. Um, I do a lot of things. Uh, last night I was DJing at the Day Zero party. I've been a DJ for 28 years. Uh, but I guess the reason I'm here is I work in the anime industry as a voice actor. Uh, I've been doing this for about 12 years now and play a bunch of roles. I think last count was like 150 some. Uh, more notably or more recently, uh, one of the Hitachi twins in Oran High School Host Club, uh, Tomiki Sakurai in Heaven's Lost Property. Um, I'm blanking. Uh, Aoi Miyoshi in Night Raid 1931 um, and a bunch of others, uh, 147 others. Uh-oh, the door is about to open. No, it's not good. We're locked in. And that's it. Can you tell us the troubles and challenges of being a voice actor? Uh, you know, I've, I've been an actor since I was seven years old, so uh, as far as voice acting is concerned, I think it's really the easiest gig uh, an actor can have. Uh, when you do theater, you have to get along with everybody in the show, and you have to get along with the director and the stage manager. and. When you're a voice actor, it's you, a director, and a sound engineer, and that's it. Um, I, I would say the hardest thing about being a voice actor is managing the level of attention and fandom that follows with that profession. Uh, that can be kind of rough from day to day. Uh, but but overall, as far as an acting gig, it's a pretty, pretty sweet gig. In fact... Uh, Probably the best part about it is the actors that you don't like, you never meet because they work at different times than you do. Uh, whereas in theater, you can't avoid people. You have to work with everybody. It feels like you're married to everybody in the play that you're in. So uh, when you do voice acting work, you just have to get along with the director and the engineer, and then it's just you and the animation. So it's a pretty sweet deal. Have also done voices for video games. Yeah. Is there any differences between anime voice acting and video games voice acting? Oh sure, <clears throat> big difference. <clears throat> uh, one of the I've I've been lucky enough to get to work on a Square Enix project. Unfortunately, it wasn't the greatest game. It was called Unlimited Saga. Um, in the case of the Enix game, we had some keyline animation and some basic animation, but uh, I've also done a lot of work on uh, lesser known titles. And when you work on those games, sometimes you have so much as just a drawing to work with. Uh, I know my character in Mushroom Men; it was just a wireframe, so I didn't even know what color or whether it had eyes. I just knew the basic shape of my character um it's kind of cool though because video game work has come a long way uh i did i even the coolest thing i've gotten to do i've done work on a ds game so it's kind of weird to hear my voice coming out of a little nintendo ds but uh, uh video game work has come a long way it's not quite as start and stop as it used to be it seems more like acting now uh but yeah it's always a different process you never know what you're going to be working with when you go to work on a video game also a DJ. Of yeah. Which one came first, voice acting or DJing? Uh, well, definitely DJing. Uh, I've been a DJ since I was 16 years old, and I've been acting longer than I've been a DJ, but uh, voice acting is something that's only come along in the last 12 years. Uh, and while I love voice acting, and I know voice acting is the reason I get to DJ in a lot of other places, um, I spend a lot of time devoted to music. I play a lot of uh, parties that are not related to anime conventions uh, uh, and, and spend a good deal of my free time just doing music stuff. Um, if I had to pick, uh, it would be no call. It would be music first, acting second. Uh, 
there's just something so much more fun about that to me. Uh, and it's, uh, whereas with acting, you work on something and you find out whether somebody liked it later. Music, you know, instantly if the crowd's having a good time. And, and I really enjoy that. I really enjoy playing for a group of like people that are just having a good time and whipping it up. So, wow, that sounded super Texan. Whooping it up. Anyway, but yeah. Now, how did you get all of your DJ skills? That you know what nobody's ever asked me that. It's a cool question. Uh, I uh, I use. I'm a big music fan. I've always been a music fan since I was a little kid. I mean, even when I was too young to know I was into music, I was really into music. Um, and when I was a teenager, I guess when I was about 14 or 15, at this teen club opened up uh, pretty much near my neighborhood. And I would just bug the DJ. I'd sit at the DJ booth and ask him, hey, what that, what's that song? Hey, where'd you get that record? And just bug him to death. Uh, one night he got sick and I got this call from his sister saying, hey, can you go in and DJ for Robert? He can't, you know, he can't even get out of the bed. And I was like, well, I don't know how to do that. And they put Robert on the phone and Robert's like, sure you do. He's like, you just... He goes, you've watched me do it a million times. He's like, when you get to the club, call me and I'll just basically walk you through the mechanics, which is, you know, how to how to use the mixing board and stuff like that. And I was still real like nervous. I'm like, oh, dude, I'm not I'm not any good at this. And he said the magic words. He's like, dude, this is the only chance you're going to ever get to dig through my records. And I was like, deal. So out of just the sheer want of just going through all of his records and seeing, you know, what he had is really how I got started. And, uh, I listened to some of my old mixtapes and they're horrible, but, uh, the neat thing is I never gave up on it. And, uh, DJing itself has changed in those years. I mean, when I first started DJing, nobody even beat matched records. Like mixing was just where you crossfaded from one song into another. And now, that's the standard beat and key matching and scratching and all that stuff really came into its own while I was DJing. So it's interesting uh, to watch it grow as an art form, as a performance art form too. Uh, a lot of people say I do a lot of different things than a lot of other DJs. I, I have a friend that was like, you jump up and down and you turn things over and you get too crazy. And that's just what I do when I'm really into the music. Plus, I think that if you've got an audience of people staring at a stage, you have to give them something to look at. So uh, so I enjoy that side of it, too. I enjoy the performance side of DJing, too. But uh, I definitely, if I, if I had to say, I put more time into being a good DJ than I do, I probably shouldn't say this, but into being a good actor. Acting is just one of those, to me, natural talents you either have or you don't. Whereas DJing is a technical skill you really have to work on, so... Uh, so yeah, I take that real seriously, but that's how I got started. Definitely. Now, if, uh, if more people wanted to get more info on you, where can they go? Well, there's this website that I haven't updated in about seven years. Uh, probably, uh, yeah, I've got a, I've got a, let's see, I've got a Facebook fan page and the only, I think that sounds so lame, but, uh. I used to let just anybody be on my regular Facebook until one of my other musicians friends like, yo, you know, you can only have 5,000 people on your page. I didn't know that. So uh, very quickly, my my real Facebook filled up. So I created a, a page. It's just called Gregor's Voice and Music. And uh, the cool thing about being there is uh, you meet lots of other people that are into things that I'm doing. And because I've done anime for so long, like the guy that just spoke to me in the hallway, he's a big fan of a show called Gravion show that almost never gets any love and so when you're on a page or like a forum where you're talking to other people you'll find out about a show you didn't know existed like Gravion or you know Hello Kitty's animation theater the lady on the plane next to me just had a fit when she found out I worked on Hello Kitty she's like I've got a Hello Kitty purse I'm like I saw it when you got on the plane but uh so it's cool uh they could go there uh I would say don't go to my Wikipedia page because it's never correct um my IMDB page is almost never correct Anime's news network has me listed in shows that I'm not in so I would say go right to the source come find me on Facebook and just go Go, hey, I want to be a part of this page. And I don't know why you have to do this when you talk about Facebook now. It's like when you talk about AIM, you have to do that too. But but yeah, I'd say go right to the source. Come find me on the interwebs. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Today, everyone. Craig Ayers. I'll see you guys later.